Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another combo with the fans for the fans. Uh, this is number six, and we got Star before Times Day. I'm gonna let him hit his uh signature intro. If you want to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Sorry, a little interruption there. <laughs> what's good? I'm Zay, otherwise known as Zay 3.0. The star before time, the CEO and chairman of the Fuck Roman Reigns Society, the king of Skisku, the pod collector, the one that TikTok just can't keep down, even though they keep fucking trying. The, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so uh, since you brought it up, I want to talk about it. So what's the what's up with the TikTok taking down your page all the time? Seems like you're always under under suspension. They hate me. I'm telling you. I don't know what it, what I did to them. You know, maybe I accidentally DM'd TikTok's mother or something. Who knows? But, um, yeah, every time I'll, I'll post a video, I'll be like, okay, this is a decent video. Oh, minor safety. I'm 20 years old. <laughs> what are you talking about minor safety? Mm. Or dangerous acts. What am I doing? Running around my living room? Is, yeah, sure. I'll I'll snap my femur running around on carpet. <laughs> is it like? Is it it's never consistent? Is always something else or what? It's minor safety, community guidelines, just general. Mm. I don't even know what that means. What did I do? Just break all of them? <laughs> like, um, and then the other ones always, uh. Some shit about like uh gang activity. Hmm. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> like Rose is talking about wrestling and comic books. Uh huh. Uh, you know the fuck Roman Reigns society out here, <laughs> busting locks apparently. And uh, so like, what got you on TikTok in the first place, though? Huh? What got you on TikTok in the first place? Um. Well, at first, it was because um, I went to my uh, my best friend's uh, baby shower, right? Mm -hmm. And one of our other friends was making TikToks there, and I was, like, jokingly making some with her, right? And she convinced me, she was like, make a TikTok page. You can just do whatever, talk about shit. So I have to give her credit, you know, got to post this bit on TikTok eventually. Thank you, Angel. You got me up here somehow. Uh, and then at first I was just, you know, I kind of just talked about anything, you know, just whatever was trending in a, you know, not a biggest fan of it, but a bit in the manosphere because I was a male on TikTok. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, you know, fresh and fit videos. But eventually I think I found Narcolepsy Boy, Suplex, and Smithception. Mm -hmm. Because I followed WWE and I followed AEW, like a couple of their videos, and then some people started popping up. Um, but it wasn't until about year and a half, maybe a year and three quarters ago, I uh, was like, you know, let me start just posting some wrestling videos here and there. At first, it was just like joking videos about like shit that happened on WWE television. Mm -hmm. And then it evolved into like, oh, what's your opinion on this? What's your opinion on that? Da 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 da. And uh, I wasn't the first account I had, um, the star before time. Mm -hmm. Originally, was the name was a dot it dot z three. I know it's cringy, <laughs> but it was like a secondary. It was just the TikTok I had after my initial account got banned. Mm -hmm. from yeah, I've had two accounts from her band. It's fucking wild. <laughs> um, but uh, at that point, when I changed it to the star before time is when I converted my content over. I was like, wrestling, comics, music. If I keep it here, let me see if I can blow up. Mm. Instead of talking about bullshit, like, I swear to God, I made a video about fucking uh, some dude said some dumb shit about Easter, and I was like, I don't know, I'm not enjoying this content anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, 
so you said you had two accounts per like permanently banned. Uh, yeah. do you know like what your highest uh like follower count on any of those? Ones? The current one's my highest follower count. Mm. I I believe so. I think right now I'm like one thousand four hundred eighty something. Mm. But uh, the count I had before this, the original Star Before Time, mm. was one point three k. Oh. And then my initial one only had like five hundred, six hundred followers. All right, all right. Uh, gotta be honest with you. That like this is before I like started making my. I had my own personal account. I think I had saw your stuff before, and um, I think I think it was something about Roman Reigns. Like, and this dude's hating, and I just and then I came across you on my WrestleSpot account. Uh, actually created, and I was like, oh, okay, you know what? Everybody got an opinion. Um, so I started looking at with your stuff in mind, and it's entertaining, man. Um, so like, gotta know. What's uh, well, I mean, I know, but for the rest of the people to know that may not know uh of you as much, what's with the with the Ro the Roman hate? All right, so <laughs> let's take it back. Survivor Series, twenty twelve, I believe. Correct? Yeah. The Shield debuts. I'm interested. I'm drawn in. I'm there. Right. I'm like, okay, they're aligned with CM Punk mysteriously. Okay, I want to see how that pays off. No fucking payoff. <laughs> Whatever. I I'm used to it. You know, I'm like 11. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I'm like, okay, what are they doing next? New Age Outlaws. Cool. The US title on tag titles. Cool. This is all so great. This is, I'm a Roman fan. Ugh, that tasted nasty. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and then we're rolling through. We get to the Shield Summit. I know everybody remembers that, right? Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm like, this is the moment Dean, who, my opinion, was the leader. Mm -hmm. I know some people say Seth. I know some people, some people say Roman. Look at everything. Dean's in front. I think, I think Dean was, yeah. Right? At, my, at this point, this is, I'm like, this is when Dean turns on, this is when Dean turns on one of them. They get rid of one of them. I'm thinking, turn on Seth, let, let him lose. He'd be a great single star. Right? Keep Roman, because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you know, he Dean's going to need a heater. Right? Nothing happens, right? 2014, Seth mm -hmm. turns on them, right? I'm like, okay, this is great. Notice, this whole time leading up to the turn, I'm getting very sick of the way WWE is booking Roman Reigns in his singles mm -hmm. match. They book Seth, it's a decent match. They book Dean, it's a decent match. When you get to Roman, it's so obvious the wrestlers are kind of slowing down to try to you know, emphasize the the right of Roman Reigns. <laughs> but it's not it's not hitting for me. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, whatever. They break up. Dean's gonna do his thing. Roman's probably gonna get paired off to someone else, or Roman's gonna, you know, do his thing in the mid card, you know, put some time in. Cause obviously, if anyone disagrees, you can argue with a fucking wall or your mother <laughs> Roman was the least talented in the shield mm -hmm. if anyone deserved to be dropped off in a mid card right after that broke up it was Roman least experience we're not going into statistics here but we're talking about two veterans in the fucking industry already with a newbie mm -hmm. why was the newbie getting more push who knows but afterwards the first few they book was with Roman I believe, with Seth, right? Makes no sense. It should have been Dean. Dean was the leader. Mm. But it's, oh, Roman's got to look big and bad. Then he turned, then he tore, what, um, a hernia or something? What was it? A ruptured yes. hernia? Something like right, that. Right, something bro, like that. tore his asshole. I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, and then he's out. They run Dean and Seth. The audience immediately sees, this is the feud to come out of the shield, right? If you're not going to do the triple threat right away, this is the feud. Roman comes back, immediately pushed for Seth. Like, this is not interesting. Like you're not, you're not giving me nothing for Roman to hook on to mm -hmm. after the shield. So they had already lost me at that point. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, and then the world title push. What sense? 
didn't make. And this isn't because of what people say, oh, Daniel Bryan didn't win the Royal Rumble. CM Punk didn't win the Royal Rumble. No, it's because Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble. That's the problem. Mm. Anyone else could have won. Mm. What was it? It was 2015? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Roman wins the 2015 Rumble, and then the 2016 Rumble was all based around him, which was some cornball-ass yeah. shit in it, though. <laughs> Don't even get me started on that. We'll get to that in a second. I got a rant about that in my chest now that I mentioned it. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's the 2015 Rumble, right? All these other people could have won. Rusev, Sheamus. Hell, I would have took another big show in. Fuck it. But I'm lying about that. I, would, I don't know. <laughs> <big show. laughs> um, But he wins. Fine. If they would have just left it at, oh, he got blue, that's fine. You know, the fan favorite didn't win. Let's just move on. Mm-hmm. Then they sent out Rock. And I'm like, yo, this is so pathetic. Mm-hmm. Like, this is so, like, it's it's so obvious at this point. You want them to work. And it's like, no. Like, don't put this. But if you want to push somebody, let them get over a bit organically. You're yeah. sending out the Rock to make a family tie that we already knew about because that's how we got his job. Let's talk. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about failed football star Roman Reigns getting a job because of that last name. However, neither here nor there. Going through 2015, they have a decent match at WrestleMania. I'll give them that. Him and Brock killed it. Mm-hmm. Right person walked out of Mania with that title, though. Yeah, I didn't want to see neither one of them walk away with that title. Honestly, no matter how good the match was, I wasn't into either one of them as champion. I don't think the crowd was into either one of them as champion. Seth comes out, it clicks automatically. It was at I think it was that moment is when I knew Roman's never getting over with me because the excitement I felt because I was into the match and I was like, okay, who's gonna win? Who's gonna be champion? And then when Seth came out, I was like. This is who's going to be champion. This is who yeah. should be champion. And I was like, yeah, Roman's never getting over with me as a baby face in this remark. Mm-hmm. No matter how bad Brock with that ass. And then through 2015, they keep Roman in the mid card. This is the point when they're starting to get me with Roman again. There's a lot of moments like this where they drop Roman away from trying to be like, oh, yeah, this is our main guy, our only guy. And they let him relax a little bit. That's when they start pulling me in a bit. And mm-hmm. then they pull some bullshit like Survivor Series. Seth's out. That's great. Did Roman ever t- challenge Seth 101 for the title after Mania? No. Exactly. At least I would have given him that, right? You know, give him the pay-per-view afterwards, left Seth be him clean. Yeah. No. But... Then we get to the Survivor Series. Steph's out. Tournament for the title, right? The finals are Dean and Roman. The winner is so obvious. Because even if you were going to have Sheamus cash in, why would you want him to cash in on Roman? Yeah. Is it to get more sympathy? Because you don't need that. Because if he's a damn good wrestler, he was going to get it. Mm-hmm. At this time, Roman Roman's not technically terrible in the ring. He's just unentertaining for me. Yeah. It just doesn't work for me. At this point, you could garner enough sympathy for Roman for him losing to Dean. Because Seth beat him at Mania. Dean beat him here. He looks like the weakest member of the Shield. That's sympathy with the crowd. Especially since they were going to do the triple threat next year anyway. That's sympathy with Mm. the crowd. But having Roman win, it just didn't work at all. And then you have Sheamus cash in to garner even more sympathy. What's the point? And then you have him fuck up Triple H. What like, what were they doing? <laughs> and it's like this point you're growing disdain for them, the character. Mm-hmm. 
no matter what he does, I'm just growing deeper and deeper into this hatred. And then I, I told you we were going to come back. The Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble 2016. Why, under what circumstances do you base an entire Rumble around one wrestler? It the like idea of the WWE all? title like being. Huh? It was called like one versus all Royal Rumble or something like that. Yeah, some shit like that, but that's probably like, <laughs> The idea of having the WWE Championship on the line in the Rumble match is not a bad idea. It works when Ric Flair did it. Mm-hmm. But you don't base the entire fucking match around someone who's in the match, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, the entire match? And then, like, you have people like AJ Styles debuting. In a match that's based around Roman Reigns, that doesn't make him look as big as he could. Granted, AJ's return is AJ's return, bro. AJ's debut is amazing. I jumped out my skin because I loved AJ in TNA. Like, that's the wrestler I followed throughout his career regardless. I wasn't even mm-hmm. into indie wrestling. So I... Uh, damn near ascending. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm like, okay... But the match is still based around Romy. He's going to just get tossed out, and that sucks. And they, they took him out for, like, half of it. Yeah, and then... And then Roman disappeared for half the match. Mm-hmm. Bro, what? If you're going to base the match around him, right, and you want him to get over, right, just just do what you want to do. Just have him go through the field. Go ahead and do it. Add him to the, the Shawn Michaels of the world that beat the fucking thing from number one, right? Maybe you can raise that number back to what it really is because you can get rid of Chris Ben Was. You don't even have to change the number. Just be like, who is it? It's Sean from number one. Edge. Mysterio or no, is he number two? Mysterio is number two. Edge is from number one from last year. Even though that's a that's a mistake. Edge came out second. But they gave him the number one credit. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm not wrong. Edge came out second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, him and yeah, Horton came out one. Edge came out two. That's right. But um, Benoit, and then there's someone else. I think there's four from number one. I think one year it was like Austin and McMahon were number one and two. I don't know who was one or two, but one of them. Uh, I know McMahon won. Austin was on that list, you know. Mm-hmm. WWE history is convoluted. I don't know what to believe or not believe anymore. Yeah. But taking him out the match. Terrible idea. Hmm. And then for him to come back, right? And just get eliminated by what? The, the League of Nations or some shit? No, no. Uh, Triple H eliminated him. Oh, That's yeah. Triple H won. That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Triple H won the fucking Rumble that year. Why does Triple H <laughs> need to win a Rumble? I don't. And the title, and the title. Who? <laughs> at that, it was also it's at that moment I knew they were going to do Roman and Triple H at Man, and yeah. I was like, "That's not going to be good." I went to the main crowning tough. moment for Roman Reigns. Another crowning moment. I'm like, oh, he doesn't need another one, bro. If you get mm-hmm. it right the first time, <sighs> anyway. But yeah, it was WrestleMania 31. That was it. That was the that was the moment. That terrible, terrible ass match was when I made my mind up. I was like, I am never gonna be a Roman Reigns fan. Would you say in the like the pre, the early stages would it would it be more of his booking more than him? Yes, early stages. Well, let's skip ahead a bit, right? Because I, I know the question would be, okay, so you hate the big dog. That's fine. But what about our tribal chief? Our tribal chief. <laughs> Look. I enjoyed the start of the tribal chief. I really did. That's mm-hmm. another moment where they pulled me in. They get me there, right? And then he can't click that second gear to get me as a face. He just can't do it. It's impossible for him. It's not in his. It's not in his talent repertoire. But, hmm? anyway, so, uh, and then 
as I'm watching the Jay Uso match. Amazing. His return to SummerSlam. Surprising. Damn good. Caught me off guard. I was popping. You know how hard it, you know how hard it would have been to make me like pop for Roman Reigns? He came out there and started spearing the shit out of everybody. I'm like, he's a heel. He's a heel. He's a heel. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Can't click that second gear. He was damn close to that Jay Uso match. Like crying in the fucking ring and shit. Like, eh, you know, it, it worked. It worked for me. And then nothing changed about him. His character failed to adapt after that. What had changed for Roman Reigns since November of 2020 to now? He's just added a title. You've had so many opportunities to adapt and bring that type tribal chief character more alive, more breathing, like, but no, it's just static. It's acknowledge me. I'm going to smash you. Island of Relevancy. Oos. <laughs> like, it's... It's it's formulaic. It's boring. I'm just like, oh, it's, it's baby face Roman Reigns with a frown on his face. Like, it's middle school S to me, bro. Like, I remember we were all in school. You know that one kid that tried acting super tough, but just, like, ain't have it in him? Mm-hmm. That's what Roman Reigns sounds like to me. That kid being like, "Hey, give me your lunch. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll be, I'll beat you up. I'll, I'll destroy you. I'll smash you." <laughs> like it just it mm-hmm. doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It's personal with Roman Reigns at this point. It's personal. Uh, so, so uh, what were your thoughts on later that into that rain, the same rain that we're in actually? God. Like three, almost, almost three years, and um, where he uh he stacked Edge and Brian. I fell asleep during that match. Oh wow! I could, I can tell you multiple Roman Reigns matches during his Tribal Chief run. I've fallen asleep during because they're very formulaic. Mm. And I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating or being extra. Like I'm a night owl. Uh. If you look at the time I post a lot of my TikToks, it's 3, 4, 5 a.m. It's very late. I stay up all night. Mm. I fall asleep during a very significant amount of Roman Reigns matches. And then I'll wake up at like 2 a.m. in a cold sweat. Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, that many a match, I fell asleep. So I woke up in that corner. I was like, stacked them? That's corny. <laughs> And now I was like, what else? Uh, the Brock match at Crown Jewel. In the still cage. Fell asleep doing that. The sound of them breaking the still cage actually woke me up. Uh, <laughs> so I, bitch. Let's see. So this, uh, you, I, I think you did say you did like the the idea of the character, you just don't like who plays it, the Tribal Chief character. Yes. Okay. The Tribal Chief would have worked if Rock had it in the 90s. Tribal Chief would work with Solo Sokoa. The Tribal Chief should be Jonathan Fatu's gimmick. Not even going to lie It should be. 1,000%. It works so much better for him. Mainly because doesn't he, I don't know, Wrestle in somewhat tribal gear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Roman out this bitch in boots and cargo pants. It don't work for him, bro. It don't <laughs> work. Goes. That nigga look like a construction worker. <laughs> and, um, so I did. A, I, po- I posted a video earlier about the shield breakup. And I asked the question. Um, if it was someone else to turn other than Seth, who would it be and why? I remember you. I just remember you just said uh, you mentioned. You would wanted it to be Dean. What do you think would have changed uh, if if Dean was the one to come out? Um, if that's very situational. Hmm. Dean, if it was at the Shield Summit for that moment on Raw with Evolution, I think Roman would have been better to turn because I don't see Dean. 
having a company man aesthetic at all. It mm-hmm. doesn't work for Mr. Moxley. As we can see now that he's outside of WWE doing this thing all over the world, yeah. John Moxley is who this man should be through and through. He wouldn't have worked in the authority. Seth worked in the authority, but if anyone else, Roman. A big heater, especially since Batista was on his way out soon. Oh, yeah. I mean, Batista did. Wait, he, he, I think, he I left think he quit that, that night. Yeah. Yeah. Batista went to go film Guardians 2. <laughs> Make another fat ass bag with James Gunn. Mm-hmm. Have him bring in Roman. It would have been great. Another tattooed guy. Easy replacement. So, uh, if they gave it to Roman, that would give him like way more. Uh, he'd been exposed to that heel character way earlier. Not this character he's in right now, probably not. But uh, that heel character. What do you think? Do you think anything would have changed as far as like? Uh, I think Roman working under a Randy Orton, a Triple H in a faction, like going through teams and shit, the same way Seth did, mm-hmm. would have benefited Roman immensely. I think Roman definitely could have learned a lot from these guys. I guarantee it. But he would have learned a lot more working alongside them. Okay. Uh, so we talked a little bit about uh that about your TikTok. Do you want to talk about your music? Uh, so when did you when did you start uh, making music? <laughs> uh, shit. Um. We're going we're gonna to have to give a few shout out during this section. Right, so go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry for the free promo. It was 2018. Uh, I remember. Okay. It's a, I'm sorry. My rank's a little scattered. Good, good. Uh, around 2016, the uh, 2016 XXL freestyle drop. Mm-hmm. That, that hit my friend group like a fucking train. He was on that crazy. <laughs> and around that time, me and my one friend, Octavius, shout out Tay, um, he, me and him would freestyle in his backyard a lot, using like tight beats from these artists just trying to fill out because we both were interested in doing music. Mm-hmm. So we did that for about two years and then eventually in 2018, uh, we found this app called BandLab. Yeah. And that's the app you see a lot of these artists on TikTok making their music on now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm an OG at tic- I'm an OG at BandLab. I was on that shit before. It's popular. I built two niggas. Remember that? <laughs> but uh, I started recording music on there with my friend Dylan. Shout out Scope. D-Scope. And uh, Tay, again. Through a God, go check out both of their SoundCloud pages. But oh, don't because neither of them niggas release music anymore. I'm sorry, I'm gonna use your platform to send a bit of a message. Go ahead, go ahead. Octavius, mm-hmm. live on YouTube, drop some fucking music. <laughs> anyway, so we started recording music on there and, uh, yeah, we've just been doing our thing for about five years now. Dylan dropped out a while ago, but me, Tay, my other friend Antonio, not my cat, apparently, but my other friend Antonio, we all do music on there now, and it's, yeah, we just, we all do our own thing. That's cool, that's cool. Uh, so do you have any, like, sort of uh, inspirations of, like, the music you create or not? Uh... It depends on, like, the type of music I'm feeling like making. Uh, You know, since, obviously, like, the whole freestyle thing started in 2016, uh, Lil Uzi, Lil Yad did a lot of, like, my, Mm. like, natural, flowy styles I try to do. Mm. Uh, Later on, when I really started getting into doing music, Juice World, X, Post Malone, I'm a big fan of that sound, that style. Mm. Uh... Lil Pete for a little while, even though mm. I left the emo rap in 2019. Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> then, uh, yeah, that's really it. Uh, oh, I do pop punk music sometimes, and you know, that's, you know, your basic fucking, um, Panic at the Discos, mm-hmm. you know, those type bands. Yeah. I don't want to go on a fucking emo spiel right now. So. <laughs> so you said you like, uh, City Like Uzi, what's your favorite Uzi album? Oh, uh, this one might be uncommon, but it's Love and Dre's 2. Oh, yeah. I don't care what nobody says. That song's got, that album's got no skips, no not skips. a single one. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, did you like Eternal Take or no? I, I like Eternal Take. There's a few songs mm-hmm. I still listen to from there, but, okay. uh, you know, it's, it's far from his best. It ain't yeah. no. All right. <laughs> Damn. God, yeah. That love is that love is rage too had me a choke hold. It still does. Still, still yes, does. sir. <laughs> uh and now Juice World. What are your favorite uh, Juice World albums? Uh Death Race for Love. Easy. Okay. Me, I'm still, uh, another I'm still no up. skipper right there. Still on uh, the love goodbye and good riddance for for me. But Death Race for oh. Love is amazing. Goodbye and good riddance has the only problem, I wouldn't say that's one of his best because I'm not a fan of the skits. Oh, okay. I see. I, I personally like the skits. I, feel, I think that's it's just one based on what you like. Uh, I, I know the skits, they had a better for the story. Like, the story of the album is great. Mm. But when I'm listening to an album, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. you know, tell your story through the music. That's what I like about Death Race for Love. Okay. There's parts yeah. of it where you can tell, like, oh, he's like, oh, I just quit doing pills. And then three, four songs later, it's I just fucking relapsed. I'm just like, okay, uh-huh. I'm seeing the story here. Mm. But uh, other than uh, this is like a little series to get your fans and like know you better. Uh, other than music and wrestling and comic comic books, what like what else? Uh, what else do you like to do? Uh, you know, uh, skateboard. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's been recent. I recently got another board. I found one. Uh, video games, big into video games, even though I don't got a console. Uh, uh shit, uh, a bit of an just anything adventurous, honestly. I'm uh-huh. What you would call an adrenaline junkie, I just like yeah. doing shit to do it. Yeah, so uh, I did yeah. Wanna... simple man to please. I did want to ask you because I was on a I got a random notification yesterday on my uh, because I don't not really many people act, uh, interact with my shorts on youtube and i posted one like do it for the vine that i did it i did like a couple months ago but i put on my youtube recently and i saw you commented yeah uh, you you damn near broke your some i forgot what it said and then oh, uh, my day. <laughs> i want to know i want to know the story now all right so it's like it wasn't 2013 it was like 2014 ish mm-hmm. back when i uh, put them in the coffin was the trend yeah. of the year and me and my friends were walking down the street. You know, we used to do that shit in the bushes. You know, that shit doesn't hurt. But then, we're walking down the street. We see this big-ass snow piles. We just had a blizzard, right? Mm-hmm. Snow piles, like, six, 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 seven. Mm-hmm. Huge. And my friend's like, Zach. Yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> Put it in a coffin on that big-ass thing. I'm mm-hmm. thinking, oh, it snowed two days ago. You know, it's fairly probably still snow- soft. It's all piled up. I jumped up, went to go hit that bitch. Ready dice. It, <laughs> when I say it condensed like that much, uh, and then just ice. And I was leading with my shoulder. Yo, I just remember hitting, sliding off, and damn near flipping. I hit the gr- I hit the ground, and I'm sitting there like. Uh, <laughs> My friends are fucking dying because they didn't know it would be ice either. Uh-huh. They expected me just to fall through it. That's what they wanted to see. They wanted to see me damn near suffocating snow, the bastards. Mm-hmm. Better, better cough and drop than Darby Allen. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so I, I'm, like, not too heavy on the, on like the comic books, but I like the movies, you know? Like the yeah. MC, MCU. Uh, what's uh, what's like your favorite uh, superhero? Favorite superhero? 
overall is the Flash. That's a no dispute to me. Oh, you Batman stands, that'd be like Batman better than all the characters. You're wrong. There's no one who embodies the spirit of being a hero of a hero, a hero mm. than the Flash. Whether we're talking Jay Garrick, Barry Allen, Wally West, Bart Allen, hell, Jesse Quick, it doesn't matter. The mm. Flash is the true insignia of being a superhero. I'm a. I don't even know. I just watch all the movies. I'm a, I guess I'm more of a Spider Man guy. For more, I was about to say for Marvel, since they have more movies and actually mm-hmm. good movies. Yeah. Um, it's Spider Man. Easy. Like, Spider Man's another character where, if we're talking Marvel, mm-hmm. truest of true heroes, there's no one who's more heroic than Spider Man. That nigga would fight Thanos by himself if he, were, if he <laughs> had to, right? Spider Man. I'm like heavily more of a Marvel guy, but oh, yeah, uh, DC does have my like favorite movie, like superior movie ever, The Dark Knight. Uh, but uh, other than those, a little overrated, but you know, I won't, I won't sit here and act like it's a bad movie at all. Okay, I will say, I will still sit and watch The Dark Knight, but when people be like, it's the best superhero movie of all time. Hey. <laughs> so what's well, yours? What's yours? <laughs> What's yours? Uh, the Winter Soldier. Okay, so I there's a few of those like in between in the MCU that I haven't seen, and that's one of them. I need to see oh, that's one of them. There's like it's like that one, Thor: The Dark World, and I think the only other one is like uh, what is it? Oh, uh, Captain Marvel. But I I, I don't know. Look, look, fuck them other two movies. They're not even that good. <laughs> Tonight, watch Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier? All right. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. It is the best comic book movie, superhero movie, whichever distinction you want to use, even though there's a difference in Marvel's history. Mm-hmm. Yes, Infinity War is an easy pick to be like, it's the best. It is the best. Like, from a... It's it's a little complicated, I understand. Mm-hmm. But Infinity War is the best Marvel movie. Winter Soldier is the greatest Marvel movie. In my humble opinion, that changes per fan. You ask. Worst superhero movie you've ever seen. Worst? Mm-hmm. Um, in Marvel's universe? Yeah, we'll start with Marvel. Yeah, start with Marvel. Okay. Uh... Eternals. Okay, I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen that one either. Is that part of the MCU, no. or is that, like, outside? No. Not really that good. Uh, I would say Eternals. Uh, Dark World is... It's not that good either. Captain Marvel's a bit boring. A lot of people aren't going to like this one, but I think Iron Man 2 is a little mid. Mm-hmm. I know, I just picked off. You're going to get a If any comic book fans hear that line, or MCU fans, oh, uh-huh. your comments already right, feel that one. <laughs> Iron Man 2 is a, a little mid, mm-hmm. but Marvel, or at least the MCU, has dropped pretty good movies consistently. But Let's not forget, Marvel is a insignia owned by multiple companies, in which mm-hmm. I would say it is hands down the amazing Spider Man too. I never, I saw the first one, but I didn't see the second one. People will say Venom, Morbius. I haven't seen Morbius. I'm glad I, I didn't apparently. One. But for what I've seen, it's amazing Spider Man too. And the uh, DC side. Oh, where do I start? Um, Batman v Superman's ass. Suicide Squad was ass. Joss Dust League was ass. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman's pretty good. I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. Aquaman 
looked nice. It was decent. Given that Shazam was pretty funny. You know. So there are three decent movies. Mm. Zack Snyder's Justice League, though. I'm sorry, it's hard to recall an entire four hours of <laughs> nothing. But it's not as bad as Justice League. The worst fucking DC movie I've ever fucking seen. Though, I'm sorry, I, I went on a bit of a spiel here. Oh, you good. Uh, the worst DC movie I've ever seen is fucking Batman v Superman. Hmm. Batman v Superman and Justice League got it tied for me. Mm. And, uh, I'm not. I don't, I don't really remember it, watching any DC movies after or since Batman v Superman. Yeah, uh, yeah I wish great. I stopped there too. I lost so much money to that company, bro. Because when I first started like going to movies on my own, instead of waiting for them to like hit. Whatever site they were based. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it was like right around the time DC was trying to rev up to compete with Marvel. I'm thinking, oh, Batman v Superman, that's going to be pretty good. It's a weird place to start, though, but that's good. Oh, mm-hmm. then Suicide Squad, that's fucking random. But, you know, get your Joker and Harley Quinn money. Yeah. And then I'm watching these movies and I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I lost money to that. But Bad Day Superman, Suicide Squad, Justice League. After Justice League, I get out. I was like, I'm not losing any of my money to these men. <laughs> now, I would have paid $20 a ticket for a Marvel movie uh, at that point, but mm-hmm. not not two cents to a DC movie. So, uh, basically, I think we covered a lot. We covered uh, your music, comic books. Marvel, DC, uh, wrestling, Roman Reigns. Uh, I do, I do keep these a uh, little shorter than my podcast. Those those podcasts go hours on time. So I do want to mm-hmm. thank you for coming on, but I also, uh, I do want to end it with you. Uh, you know, uh, shouting yourself out after, but I do want to ask if you have any advice to give a younger content creator and like way they would uh want to just pick up a camera and start recording something. Go ahead. Oh. To any, like, younger content creators, people who want to get into, like, making content, firstly, what I want to say to you is edit, not showing your face, you know, the flickery, jumpy stuff, that's not good long term. You want to make a personable contact with your audience, show your face, talk to them, interact be far more interactive than a lot of you younger TikTokers are. A lot of you just, y'all are like, oh, I'll interact to this comment because it fits what my next video idea is or, oh, they gave me an idea. Like, no, com- like comment, reply, like all the comments sometimes in your comments. If you got like 20 comments in there, like them all. It's going to foster higher algorithm for yourself because all your comments have at least one like. Other than that, pick up the camera and find your niche. Don't make generalized content. There is no longevity there than going viral one time for something stupid. Promise you, find a niche, whether it's wrestling, comics, movies, music, knitting, fucking breastfeeding yes there's niches for this shit bro it's everywhere find yours stick to it and grind through and don't be afraid to do dumb shit like this i mean i'm so, wait hold up wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. i mean like does some of y'all like you know having two fans talk to each other interview each other it might be dumb or whatever like I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put no, it. No, that was funny. That was funny. You good. <laughs> but, like, don't be afraid to do stuff like this and just get your name out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, to piggyback off what he said a little bit. Um, sorry, that was funny. Uh, when I when I started my page, I 
had a problem with showing my face. And as I'm like growing my page, I'll do it every now and then. But you know, once you find your niche, you kind of stick with it, but don't be afraid to you know branch out and yeah, branch things out. within your niche. You know, you know, branch out and uh, like these, they don't. When I put them on TikTok, they don't really get that many views or likes. But I like doing it, and it has to do with wrestling, so I'm gonna keep posting them. So yeah, don't be afraid to branch out, but remember, like to you know. Show your face, use your voice, because uh, I, li- I love. Don't get me wrong, I love edits. You post doesn't go viral because yeah. let's be fair, very few things go viral, but it doesn't yeah. get the best of views. Mm. If you're doing stuff for other people, your face is gonna be in their videos. They're yeah. likely to get other views, and you compile them. Like I posted the first clip from the podcast I did of just me eating. I got like 500 views, <laughs> but. Uh, the other clip we had of us starting to argue about Roman Reigns on Teo's channel, or Teo, mm-hmm. sorry, I always say the nigga name wrong, um, on his channel hit like a thousand and someone like, okay, that's a thousand more people. If they didn't follow me, they see my face. Yeah. And my overreactions. Uh, yeah. Um, edits are really, I, I love edits, but uh, you, you, you can't be afraid to, you know, Branch out, straight face, all that. Uh, Steven, let me give a shout out to Steve, uh, Steven Sports, Steven Seven Sports, something like that. Uh, he was on my last podcast, and uh, he uh, he did edits, but he's making a full transition into showing his face, uh, giving like, takes, and he's they're really good. They're really good. Like, there's nothing wrong with starting with edits, you know, especially if you're in the younger demographic. You know, yeah, we, we all understand that. You know, I make my content aimed towards more adult wrestling viewers because yeah. uh, you know I'm 20 I want to talk to other like older viewers I think the youngest TikToker I might have a conversation with or have is Teo or T- Teo god damn it <laughs> <laughs> um this Teo which he's like 17 N- nigga a jit a little child on here <laughs> but no nah, seriously like God keep it around your age range you're not going to find very many companions in this community if you're doing edits because you're out here talking with the guys that are like Sasha Banks is split at the Royal Rumble this year with the best WWE moment which we all know why is their favorite WWE moment <laughs> but you know you don't want to interact with that crowd that's not a crowd you're going to grow in it's mm-hmm. a crowd that's only trying to grow in one area and it's not yeah they're not reaching very far, apparently. Between being 11 and things are just starting to grow in. Mm-hmm. Between being 40 years old and nothing's growing. You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, man. Um, another thing, don't be afraid to, if you have a creator that you, you like and you need advice, DM them. Let them uh, when, I first, when I started my page, I, I didn't know what to do, so I just DM'd a few creators, a few of them. Uh, hit me back even like uh, Michael loves you boy. I, I just asked him for advice. He gave me like three full paragraphs, and I appreciated that. So don't be afraid to ask for advice because someone may give it to you. Yeah, I tell people all the time when I'm on podcasts and shit. The likelihood you'll get a DM response from me is high. I have I have people who follow me that just send me videos that they found fucking funny, and I'll just I'll open them, I'll watch the video, I liked it, and I'll I'll maybe comment on it real quick. Mm-hmm. Like this one, this one dude sent me this one video, and he was like, "Just this nigga getting wrecked." He bro got a whole table thrown at him, and I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> I was like, "How the hell did he know I'd find this enjoyable?" But fuck it, it was funny. Yeah. Well, for some reason, TikTok doesn't allow me to open my messages to everybody. Probably a good thing. Uh, hit up my oh, Instagram. Yeah. My, my DMs also, are my DMs are open on Instagram. From me, it's probably a good thing because. Uh, I get wild enough on my account already. Imagine if I had to start like cussing folk out. It's raps. Yeah. If, uh, if you're needed advice, just DM me on Instagram. That's the easiest way to get to me where I'll probably see it. Um, but yeah, that's a. Uh, I was a convo with the fans for the fans. I'm gonna let him shout out all the stuff right now. His little closing outro. Go ahead. <clears throat> I'm gonna get it right this time. I fucked up the first time. What's it? All right. 
I said I'd get it right and then stutter three times. Isaiah, focus. Anyway, I've been Zay, a.k.a. Zay 3.0, the star before time, the CEO and chairman of the Fuck Roman Reigns Society, the king of Skisku, the pod collector, the man TikTok can't stop and won't stop, the one, the only, Z, A, Y, and you can find me at the star before time on TikTok and Instagram finally changed that handle. Um, also, Twitter, I fucking hate to, but I'm there too. Um, yeah, uh, Zay 3.0 on all platforms you find your music on, whether it's Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, Tidal, iHeartRadio, I'm there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's been it's been wonderful. It's been great, and I have no other words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have to check out his page. Check out his music. Uh, check me out at Russell Spot. The Russell Spot. Basically, I already see my little ugly yellow logo. If I just click there, give me a little follow, subscribe. Uh, check out the podcast. Um, uh, this will be released after the Tuesday's uh, discussion. Make sure you, if you haven't checked that out yet, go check it out. I'm sure it was crazy. Um, yeah, I appreciate y'all joining. See yeah. y'all later.